So what if you're thin provisioning? I'm going to go ahead and throw that term out there. We also have some other terms that we use, um, zero fat provisioning or low fat provisioning. Uh, what can you do to help make sure that your volume doesn't get taken offline if you run out of space? Well, there's a couple options. The first one we'll talk about is snapshot auto delete. You can configure it based on several different triggers to automatically delete snapshots like we saw in one of the previous examples uh, where a snapshot was deleted and allowed you to, uh, to have space free. You can configure it to look at volume free space, space reservation, and snap reserve. So snap reserve, for example, is if you do have, say, a 20% snap reserve, if it uses up 18% of that, it'll go ahead and delete some snapshots, or whatever you configure it to be. Um, the order options, um, oldest first, newest first, are self-explanatory. Deferred delete is um, simply a selection that lets you choose which snapshots you want to delete or delete first. Uh, you can configure it to delete user-created snapshots, um, on tap scheduled snapshots, or um, snapshots based on a certain naming convention that you can specify. There's lots of options there. Uh, so you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of tweaking you can do to make sure that if it does have to kick in and delete some snapshots, you know, hopefully it's able to reclaim enough space by just deleting the ones that you, that you don't need. Commit options, I always recommend that, these, uh, that the default commit option, which is try, is not changed. Uh, disrupt and destroy, uh, what they do is they kind of ignore whether a snapshot is, um, is used for a lung clone or flex clone or snap mirror or whatever. Um, you have to be weary of snapshot auto delete for a couple reasons. One is if you're using snap mirror, uh, you want to be careful with snapshot auto delete because it has a nasty habit of deleting your snap mirror base snapshot. So then you have to go and rebaseline your snap mirror because you didn't manage your storage effectively. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is if you're using a Snap Manager product to take uh, host application or host file system consistent snapshots, um, it's going to be using data sets or backup sets that may have more than one snapshot. And is Snap Auto Delete, if it deletes a snapshot that's part of a backup set, it can um, damage the integrity of a backup set and make it so that it's not able to be managed by your Snap Manager product anymore. So uh, I'm just throwing these warnings out there uh, for you guys uh, to be aware of. The next option we'll talk about is volume auto size. And what it does is it basically allows a volume to grow in an emergency to prevent the LUN being taken out of offline due to an out of space condition. Settings are off or on. Uh, and with, within the settings for volume auto size, you can define the maximum growth, that is how large can it grow in the increment size, pretty self-explanatory, um, how big it should grow every time it has to grow. Some options there uh, that we can also look at for trying to keep your LUN safe from being taken offline, and you can specify if it should try and do a volume grow first or a snap delete first. Uh, keep in mind the things that I mentioned about the pitfalls of snap delete. You probably want to try and use volume grow first until that fails, uh, and then it can go back to snap delete to try and reclaim space. Um, and then you have to be you have to be mindful of your snap manager backups or your snap mirrors or snap vaults or what have you. Anything that needs snapshots could be imp impacted by that. Um, now, why would you? a quick discussion topic, why would you want to do snap delete first instead of volume grow? Well, if you're using a chargeback system where uh, maybe you're a hosting provider or um, maybe your, your, your customers um, uh, are allocated a certain amount of space and they, you don't want them to use more than that, uh, maybe you put snap delete first and maybe you turn auto grow off and tell them, hey, you're, you're you know, uh, zero fat or low fat provisioned or thin provisioned or whatever term you want to use and let them know that they need to be wary of, of what data they write. Uh, and maybe you just turn auto grow off and let them suffer the consequences if the link gets taken offline. So these are all things to, uh, to keep in mind. 
You can see these settings in System Manager under Volumes. Remember, these are set at the Volume layer uh, in the uh, Storage Abstraction stack, I guess is the term I'll use for that. In this example, um, could snapshot auto-delete and volume auto-size have prevented this loan from going offline? Sure. If you set the maximum space to grow beyond what it currently is set to, you turn it on. Um, and if there is space in the aggregate to allow it to grow, volume auto-size could have saved this loan. Uh, likewise, because you've got basically half the volume is in data that's unique to snapshots. If snap auto-delete had kicked off, it could have freed up uh, 50 gigabytes worth of data in this example and also prevented that LUN from going offline. So you should always consider using snap auto-delete and volume auto-grow together to ensure that your LUNs um, are protected when you're in a uh, less than fully or full fat provisioned or um, thick provisioned environment. So. Again, like we talked about um, briefly, whether, whether you use snapshot auto-delete, volume auto-grow, both, and which one you use um, in preference is entirely up to the needs of the organization, but uh, care should be taken uh, when using these options to make sure that the, uh, the, your LUNs are protected from being taken offline. 